let's have a look at batch processing and how you can do it within eCognition Developer. And you actually need a few things. One is a rule set that you want to apply on multiple projects and the, those projects have to be in a workspace and you have to have at least one server license. If you have one server license, you can activate one engine. And if you then send, like as you see here, uh, 100 jobs to that server, it's gonna take one project, so one job at a time. If you have multiple server licenses, for example, four, it always gonna parallel process. So it's gonna use four projects and it's gonna process four projects at a time. And if one project is done, it's gonna take another one. Uh, regarding eCognition server, you actually don't have to install anything additionally if you're using the setup one, and that's what we're gonna do here in this exercise. So this eCognition server is already installed when you install eCognition developer, and that's actually the easiest way to work with it. So you don't need a extra installation, and it's more or less a solution for smaller projects. You don't need separate server hardware or an administrative know-how, so it's simply there and you can use it as long as you have a server license. The second setup is uh, using eCognition Grid and you can install that, so you need to install this one additionally on a dedicated server. So you also can use this if you go into production, right? If you wanna use a dedicated server machine, which is very powerful, um, and you simply want to run rule sets on that. So you can use the second setup. And as you also see here, you can define some worker nodes if you have multiple server licenses. So you actually can distribute your analysis onto different worker nodes, other machines, and simply go into production with your rule set and your project. But again, we're gonna use setup one, so you don't have to install anything. It's all there. And uh, yeah, let's go from here. I actually prepared two different scenarios. One, that's the first one that we're gonna start with, is where we have one image and we're gonna tile that image in eCognition and analyze the tiles to show you batch processing um, and then stitch the results back together also using eCognition server. And the second scenario is where you already have tiles and you wanna uh, use eCognition. And the workflow there are gonna be that we're gonna create projects for each tile. We're gonna analyze those projects based on a rule set. And afterwards, we're gonna stitch the results back together into a mosaic within eCognition. So two different workflows. And let's start with the first one. And what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna create a project and load the data. So we're gonna have one raster file. Um, and then we're gonna create multiple projects based on this main project, so to say. So we're gonna use tiling in eCognition. So we're gonna create multiple projects. Actually, one project will also be enough to show you server processing, how that works, but it's more appealing if I show you how it works on multiple projects. That's why we use tiling to simply create 100 projects. And uh, yeah, you don't have to use tiling to create uh, hundreds of projects. Um, have a look at the customized import video that we have. So you can create import routines that automatically create for each file in a certain folder directory a project. If you have 100 files in a directory, eCognition automatically can create 100 projects based on your customized import routines. Or you could also use this predefined import routines that we have. Yeah, to put it in a nutshell, you simply need a project, at least one project in the workspace so you can use the batch processing. Yeah. Server processing, if you have one, it's not batch processing, isn't it? Okay, and then we're gonna write a simple rule set that classifies water and non-water, and then we are gonna try to apply the rule set on all projects. So all tiles that we're creating in the workspace, we're gonna run the rule set and we're gonna use eCognition server for batch and parallel processing. I'm gonna show you that on my machine with four server licenses, so it can process four projects at a time. If you have one server license, it's simply gonna use just one project at a time, right? As explained before. And then I'm gonna show you a nice tool, stitching actually. So if you create tiles in eCognition, you also can stitch your results back together. So the main project that we had, where we created the tiles, we can synchronize it so to say we can more or less synchronize our results from the tiles to that main project and stitch them back together so you have one project with all the results of the tiles 
All right, let's open eCognition and start creating the first project. So we're gonna load the data and create this main project that we need for tiling. In the data folder, you're gonna find a TIFF file. That's a Sentinel-2 image that I reduced to four bands. Here it is, and also to 40 meter spatial resolution, so not 10 or 20 or whatever, so 40 meter spatial resolution. And um, yeah, before we continue and create the tiles, so that's the first step, I'm gonna hit the save project button and that's gonna also force you to create a workspace and save the workspace. Hit okay, so first save the workspace and the project is always stored within that workspace. So I'm gonna create a workspace in the data folder and leave the default name new workspace. All right, now we have one project and I'm gonna first show you how tiling works. So if you have the workspace here, that is our project. You can right click on it and choose create tiles. Here you simply can choose the tile size. You actually, we also have an algorithm for that. You also could do this in an automated manner in the rule set, but we're gonna do it manually here. So let's go for horizontal 250 and vertical 250. And that's gonna create tiles based on that size. And you're gonna see that we now do have a lot of projects here. And that was the idea. Um, so 109 tiles, actually 110, because we start here with 000. And it also created this subfolder where only the tiles are stored, right? And um, you actually can double click tiles and open them. So we do have water tiles um, and here we do have some land. So next step is to create a rule set that classifies water or discriminates water and non-water. Actually, it would make sense to create that rule set or develop it on a tire where you have both water and non-water. Um, you also actually can here in the workspace change the view to large thumbnails and that's gonna give you an overview or give you a thumbnail of the scene, right? And I think if I change this one here to the right size, we actually could get a, yeah, a more or less a representation of the whole uh, project, the main project. But I'm gonna pick one out, this one here that has land and water. And then I'm gonna switch over to the rule set development layout to develop my rule set. Layer one is, in our case, it's blue, two is green, three is red. So I'm gonna change this one to a true color composite. And we're now gonna create a rule set that discriminates water and non-water, very simple one. And I'm also gonna uh, be fairly fast and um, yeah, because that's not the focus of this video. Ah, and I actually just noticed that the view here is uh, my personal setup. Um, actually you can, if you change the windows, you can go to view and save current view. And next time you open eCognition, the view is gonna be as you had it in that moment but you also can hit here restore view and that's probably what you have um yeah but as you probably know you can move those windows and create your own view as you like let's develop the rule set i'm first going to create a structural process and call it water non water classification and what we're gonna Compute is the NDWI, so the normalized difference water index, and then use the multi threshold segmentation to simply use one fixed threshold. It's going to be zero to split into water and non water, so pretty straightforward. To compute the NDWI, we have this index layer calculation algorithm. Simply choose the index, the predefined one of these predefined indexes, NDWI. This is the green layer. Green layer in our case is layer two, and the near infrared, which is layer four and that should create the NDWI, keep the rest default, hit execute. And it pops up here in the view settings. So you see water has high values and non-water low values. And we're gonna use the multi-threshold segmentation and simply use this image layer, the NDWI, and say, hey, you are water, give it a good color, if you are lower than zero and you are non-water, if you're greater 
then zero. Give it a brown, yellowish color. Let's test it. And yeah, that, ah oh no, it's the other way around. Water, sorry for that. This is non water. Because high values represent water, okay. So that looks better. Positive is water, negative is non water. And the min object size, I simply gonna go for 250. So it doesn't create image objects smaller than 250 pixels. And that's just gonna clean up our result here of the multi threshold segmentation. Now we are done already. Um, we save the rule set, right click here, save rule set as. I'm also gonna save it in the data folder and actually you already have that exact rule set. So if you don't wanna develop it, you can load it. Um, I'm gonna call it batch processing water non water and save it. And then you can load it into other projects and or use it for batch processing. Let's close this project again. So hit this, not the top X button here on top right, but the, the second one down here, that's gonna close the project. That looks empty. If we change back to data management layout, we're gonna see the workspace again with all our tiles. And now we wanna run this rule set on all the tiles that we have, right? How do we do it? First of all, again, you need an Ecognition server license. If you have one, you need to activate it in Ecognition. So how do you do it? So you have to go to tools, manage local servers. In my case, I already checked here the engine server, this checkbox enable. In your case, you probably have to check it. So it's enabled and then define the number of engines, so the number of server licenses you wanna use. In my case, I do have four server licenses, so I entered the number four here, so it's gonna use all of those. If you have four and you only wanna use two, define the number two here. If you just have one, type in the number one and then hit OK. And if the server engines are running, this circle down here should also turn green. Engine server is running. And now what we can do is you either could click on one tile and hit analyze, but we wanna analyze all of those. Um, you also could select multiple tiles and then right click analyze. And what we're gonna do is because we have this folder structure here, we're simply gonna click right click on the tiles folder and hit analyze. Now you have to make sure that the local host here, that this job scheduler is defined here, 8186. That is for the local server. If you're using the grid, it's gonna be 8184. So make sure it's 8186 if you're processing on your local machine. Then next step, rule set. You load the rule set that you want to apply. So that's gonna be our batch processing rule set. And then important is, or interesting, project file. So how should eCognition deal with the project once it's processed? Um, you can choose save without rule set, save with rule set, or don't save project file. Um, we're gonna use save with rule set, so the rule set's gonna be in each tile stored as well in the project if we open it after processing. You also can save it without rule set, so the project's gonna be stored, you have the results in the project and uh, there's no rule set. And last one, don't save project file. It won't save the project file. Um, you can use it if you are, if you have in, at the end of the rule set an export and you're only interested in the export, you don't need to save the project, right? Uh, doesn't make sense. But uh, we're gonna use save with rule set and now simply hit start. And I'm quickly gonna switch back here to the list view because you have additional information here. So you see the state process means it's processed, waiting means those are waiting to be processed. And the processing is very fast in this rule set. That's why you don't have uh, processing. So there's another state processing if it's currently processing. Let's have a look at the job scheduler. If you open uh, your web browser, and you type in localhost 8186. You're also gonna see the jobs on this left-hand side. 
can click this one. This is processing currently. You see the same thing as you see in eCognition Developer in the workspace. And you get additional information here. How many engines are used currently? Four, so four engines are used. And you also get detailed information about the single tiles, the single projects, the layers, and you also can have a look at the log file. So a lot of information here to monitor your processing. And it's important to know that this is running in the background, right? So this is a service which is running and you actually can close eCognition Developer. You can open a new project, a new workspace and keep on working or developing a rule set and it's still going to continue processing in the background. So if you close now eCognition Developer and open this uh, localhost 8186 in the web browser, you would still see that processing is going on even though you've closed eCognition Developer. And actually, if the state is changed to process, you simply can click on a tile and see the result. All right, let's try to get one thumbnail view with water and land. So that looks actually good. And the next step is now we use server processing um, to batch process and parallel process, right? And for stitching, right? We created those tiles based on this initial project. And um, now what I want to do is synchronize more or less the results of those tiles back to the main project. You also need a server license for that. Um, tiling works without a server license, but stitching, you need a server license. And actually all of that that I'm showing you here can also be automated using algorithms in the rule set. So you can do tiling analysis and stitching also within the rule sets so without any manual interaction, right? But again, for the stitching, let's go to list view. You see, we have our main project here. I opened it already, double clicked it, and that's what we see, no results. But you can right click on it and stitch projects. And then it's going to stitch projects, um, all the tiles, the results, the tiles that were created based on this project and transfers the results to our main project. And then we should have a classification and a segmentation as we have on each tile. So localhost 8186, leave that default, simply hit start. And then it's going to be processing and then process. And then you need to double click it again to open it. And you see that's the stitch result. Each tile here is represented more or less by this chessboard. And uh, all the results are now on the main project. To clean up this, I won't call it mess, but to clean that up, I also wrote a rule set and I'm gonna load it here. Um, right click in the process tree, load a rule set. It's this mosaic clean up water, non water. And that's a simple cleanup. And uh, what I want to do is first get rid of these lakes. I think those are mostly clouds that were mis misclassified or actually are lakes, but I am interested in ocean and land. So I, I want to have the island as one object. And I'm using here this find enclosed by class algorithm. I'm also going to link the video up here uh, on the top right corner. And yeah, Class filter water, I want to find it close by class water. So only look at water. If they are enclosed by non-water, put them into the class non-water. After executing this, all those objects are reclassified into non-water and then I simply run a merge region with default settings and that should give me this result. And that looks stunning. Let's can delete all of this um, because actually when you do the stitching you also can apply a rule set so I'm simply gonna delete all the results of the image object level mainly and I'm also gonna delete the, the rule set um, and close this project do you want to save it yes save it and now when you open it uh, you should have no results again okay uh, we have the NDWI. I can delete this as well. Good, close it and save it. So we have a clean main project again and I'm gonna run 
stitch projects again. And what you can do is check this checkbox use rule set. And now I'm gonna define this mosaic cleanup rule set that I've just loaded into this main project. And actually it will apply this after stitching right away. So you don't have to do anything. Um, yeah, hit start. And now it's gonna stitch and apply the rule set in one go. And then you have your final result. Let's open it, processed, there we go. And because we have safe rule set in the project, it's also there, right? So that's how you can use eCognition server for batch and parallel processing. Um, I additionally showed you this tiling and stitching. For stitching, you need also server license and stitching also only works on tiles that you've created in eCognition using this tiling. And again, all of that can be implemented in the rule set and can be executed in an automated way without any interference. And um, yeah, that would be the final result. And the, I think the workflow sh should be clear now. All right, let's uh, have a look at a different scenario. Let's assume you already have tiles and you want to execute this rule set on the tiles. How would you do it? Several ways. Um, what I'm going to show you first is we're gonna batch create projects for each tile. And then we're gonna have for each tile a project here and we're gonna create or reuse actually the rule set that we have uh, used here for the classification as well. But then we're gonna export a raster file that has uh, the ID of one for water and the ID two for land. Export the results and then we're gonna have for each tile a raster export our results and then I'm going to show you how you can stitch those tiles these results tiles in eCognition together to get the same result as we see currently here different workflow but uh, yeah gonna be cool let's jump into that so first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the, the workspace and I create a new folder I'm gonna call it tile import and to batch create projects, you can use predefined import routines or customized import routines. Um, have a look at our other video material on the customized import, everything is explained there. So if you don't know what that is, have a look at that video first. I'm gonna use simply predefined import. Uh, here we have most uh, the most generic import templates that are helpful and I wanna use the first one, generic raster, one file per scene. And that's gonna look into a folder and create for each file, it finds a project. So I have to navigate to that folder, data folder, and you have this tile, simply select the tiles. In the preview, you already see what it will create. Hit okay. It's the same data set actually um, that we are looking at. So here are those tiles. I'm gonna put on the large thumbnail view right so you see the thumbnails here so it's uh, exactly the same scene but in this case we have tiles and not the mosaic let me load the rule set that we use for classification first i'm going to use a scene where we have land and water this one and let's load the previous rule set that we've uh, used for batch processing water non-water classification and we gonna simply run it and then we have the classification and now what I want to do is I want to export a raster with the raster value one for water and the raster value ID two for non-water and I'm gonna use object variables so I first need to create those assign ID to objects and we actually simply can use update variable. And we can create a variable and it's important variable type, not a scene variable, scene variable is a global variable. We want an object variable. So the value for each object can be different. And we're gonna call it classification. That's the name of the variable. I'm gonna start with an underscore. So I'm gonna find it easily. Um, let's define it here. It's an object value. It's a double, so it's not a string. That's perfect. And I want to assign 
a value of one if now domain comes in if on new level the class is water then give it the value of one this object right so this object is going to have a variable called underscore classification and holds the value of one and then i simply copy and paste this update variable and i'm going to change class filter to non-water and set the value to 2. Okay. Um, first, to show you, I'm going to execute the first one and display the image object information and click on to an object. So here you see non-water is 0 because I haven't classified it for this variable and water should have the value of 1. If I execute this one, we should get the value of 2 here. Right. And now based on this feature, I'm gonna create a raster and then export that raster. So we can use uh, temporary, it's called create temporary image layer. And here you can create a temporary image layer and assign feature values. Um, so the pixel value is gonna have the feature values. And we simply gonna use our underscore classification. Output layer name is temporary. That looks good. Execute this one. Error defining process error feature not specified. Ah, sorry. Value for undefined zero. We have to define the feature here. Uh, and the feature is at the bottom, variables and array features. Variables, so those are the ones that you have created actually. Um, object bound variable, and here's the classification. So previously, sorry for that, I e defined the value for undefined, right? But value for undefined is zero, and the feature is underscore classification. Execute this one, and then in the few settings, we should have a new raster layer, and let's have a look at that one. And here we go, pixel values of two for non-water and water has the pixel values of one. And as a final step, we are gonna add a export. So we wanna export our results, export image. And we simply gonna export temporary, maybe rename the export item name um, to classification. That's gonna create a classification folder in the results folder. Yeah, and all the files gonna be stored in there. Let's hit okay. And maybe also execute it to test if this is working for this tile before we batch process it. So let's open that, the workspace directory, the results folder, and there's a folder classification. And there we have it. Uh, so that worked, uh, that's nice. Um, gonna close it again gonna save this rule set right click here save rule set as and I'm gonna call it batch processing water non water and raster export and now we close the project and now we simply can use eCognition server again to batch process all the tiles so let me go to the list view here and what I now want to analyze is all the projects in this tile import folder. So I right click here on the tile import, analyze, and we have to choose the correct rule set, which is in my case, this batch processing water under water and raster export. Open it, don't save project file, right? Don't save it, let's keep that setting. Um, because we're only interested in the exported results and hit start and now same story as before awaiting processing processed and you also could look at the local host 8186 um, the job scheduler in the meantime if you have been processed already i'm gonna look in the results folder and see if that is working all right so we are creating 
a lot of files. So for each tie, we should have one export file. And those only should have two pixel values, one and two. So one for water and the value of two for non-water. Yeah, in the meantime, I'm simply gonna drag and drop one file in here so we see if the result is good. And again, it's processing in the background. Ah, that's ex actually exactly the same. I think the same tile that we've uh, developed the rule set on. So two land one is water. I'm gonna drag and drop another one. So it's uh, this tile here, only once. So we only have one class with the ones. Okay, and soon it will all be processed and then I'm actually gonna show you how you could actually stitch the results that we've created in a virtual mosaic in eCognition. And that's really cool because you can uh, use this predefined import actually to stitch tiles together and then it's a virtual mosaic. So it's simply existing virtually within eCognition and it's not stored on your hard drive, but you still can run a rule set on that uh, stitched virtual mosaic. You can tile it, you can, you can do anything you like. And that's what I'm gonna show you here in the end. So all have been processed and what I'm gonna do, uh, let's create yet another folder. Uh, stitching mosaic and let's use this predefined import and it's down here raster stitching one project per folder and the folder is our results classification let's select this and the result of this is one project called classification hit ok and then we should get a stitched Result, no, and here we go, twos and ones. So that is the result of this workflow. So starting from tiles, um, analyzing the tiles, exporting results, and then stitching the results back together. Um, one last thing, I'm gonna create yet another folder. Um, you, you also could have uh, done this raster stitching one project per folder right at the beginning with the input files, for example. That would be simply a different workflow. So selecting the tiles instead of the results, and then you're gonna get a RGB mosaic based on the tiles. Here we go. So this is now existing only virtually, right? And you can run the segmentation and whatever. Um, so that would be another approach, uh, first stitching all the tiles and then analyzing it. But if that scene becomes too large and uh, your machine cannot cope uh, with the memory that might be created during uh, the execution of the whole scene, you can tile it again, uh, process the tiles and stitch it back together. Okay, so that is it. Just a quick recap, what you need is a rule set that you've developed or that you found or a colleague developed, a rule set that you wanna apply on multiple tiles or multiple scenes, and then you need to have those uh, scenes or projects created in eCognition in a workspace, and then you can analyze those if you have at least one server license, and then you need to activate it and so on. All right, that's the end of this video, I think this will come in handy if you go into production and want to apply your rule set on multiple scenes. So have a look at it, enjoy it, and here next time.